Good morning, everybody. Sorry for the delay. I've had some technical difficulty this morning, but we are going to rock and roll like I normally do with the content. Welcome to the house. Come on in. <clears throat> the Rusty Clark is here. I appreciate you being here, Rusty Clark. Please share with some of the people in your life that are significant, whether they be friends, neighbors, co-workers, or relatives. Michael, welcome. Uh, Michael, if you're new to uh, my broadcast, by all means, please put down at the bottom that you're new. And we are going to get started. And today's topic is, what do your team members really want? I haven't had a chance to actually put the title in because I was working so hard to get some connection. Teresa, very good, Teresa. Hello. Oh, Kenner is in the house. Wow. Most of the times it's all over the United States or in London. And so, man, I feel like I got a homeboy right there in Kenner. Isn't that excellent? So let me go ahead and flip this over. I appreciate the hearts. And if you are new to Perry 10K or Perry uh, Periscope, uh, the hearts are, is your way to show appreciation uh, to um, the actual speaker. So let's see if I can get this turned around here. Okay, very good. So we've got it turned around, and so uh, let me introduce myself, and then we will rock. I will give you the best 10 minutes that I have, um, because uh, that's my goal in, in Periscope. First things first, my name is Marvin LeBlanc. Uh, I am the founder of Marvelous Performance Systems. Well, what do we do? Uh, Robin Williams, yes, I do get that uh, a good bit, and when I was a little younger, uh, the back head of my back head and the back head of um, oh who's this guy uh, he was on um, this funny show Baldwin Alec Baldwin uh, so I, I've gotten that from time to time which is okay uh, it's all good so here's the deal guys um, I'm a coach I'm a speaker I'm an Amazon best-selling author and I've been an insurance entrepreneur for the last 30 years and I've done hundreds of talks across America, and uh, I've had the privilege to actually talk to team members, not the owners, but the team members, uh, on what they have to say about their owners. Hello, Miss Nia. Thanks for coming in, Miss Nia. Appreciate your hearts. Uh, and the team members are the ones that came up with these six items that I'm going to share this morning. Um, you may have a list of what you think your team members want, and I would like you to compare that list to this list here. Number one, what team members want is they want a leader that they can be proud of. And so what, what does that mean to you? Uh, what would you have to do, and this is an open discussion so you can certainly share at the bottom, uh, what would you have to do in your mind uh, so that you would be a proud leader for them. You would be an example. And how are you going to be that example? You know, what image do you see yourself as a leader? Are you a driving leader? Are you a dictatorial leader? Are you a compassionate leader? What, what are you? That's the question one. Anybody have anything to share there? Question two is, what do team members want? Being passionate is important. Absolutely. From a standpoint of starting an organization, I would tell people not to start an organization if they are not passionate, if they do not find a way to be completely clear on what it is that they're trying to accomplish. And if you're in a relationship, man, you need to have a conversation. There's no set hours. 
the hours are brutal if you're reading the newspaper or looking at an email that says oh this person was an overnight s success that's just bullshit it's just not happening that way guys you got to put your heart and soul into it you have to have a passion for being a leader and also uh, in my leadership experience uh, early my ego was a lot more sensitive than it is now uh, and I did want more recognition as a leader when I was younger but the reality is leadership is selfless selfless that means that I'm throwing myself into my team every day uh, building their spirits continuing to drill down on what my core values are because <clears throat> those core values have to be funneled into the hearts and souls and actions of my team members otherwise a person could go buy products and services from somewhere else so the real value has to come from you so number one a leader that they can be proud of number two a leader who exhibits positive and productive behaviors if you say you're going to start a meeting on time, then start a meeting on time. If you say you're going to end a meeting on time, end the meeting on time. Well, Marvin, it was supposed to go 25 minutes, but we went longer. Nope, because we had something come up. Nope, nope, nope. It's disrespectful for everybody. You start on time, you end on time. Here's the number one rule. If you go um, into my uh, catch.me forward slash Marvin LeBlanc, I have tons of, of, of broadcasts there, and one of them that I just thought of that I wanted to share with you, it's called Great Meeting Guidelines. You might want to write that down, Great Meeting Guidelines. And one of the first things I talk about on, on how to have great meetings, rule number one, don't have the meeting. Don't have the meeting. Yeah, yeah. There's a hell of a lot of times people want to have meetings. They don't need to have meetings. They need to make some decisions on their own. That can be covered collaborative, collaboratively through email. But uh, meetings are a last resort, not a first result. Uh, it's not, oh, we're going to have coffee and kick the water cooler, and then we're going to get in the topic. And, oh, John, you know, John, he's going to tell an old story. No. No, my average meeting doesn't last. The, the longest meeting I have is 25 minutes. Um, um, Gary Vaynerchuk recently told me, um, if you don't know who Gary Vaynerchuk is, Gary V, uh, you need to follow Gary V um, because he owns Vayner Media. And uh, Gary can have as many as 70 meetings, 70 meetings in one day really that's possible yeah you know why because um, he's having five minute meetings a lot of my meetings are huddles I call them huddles where we just stand up uh, we get right to it we rock it out and when we leave if people are standing up whenever they get tired they want to sit down good that means it's about time for the meeting to end so your your, your team members want uh, a leader they can be proud of number two they want a, a leader who's got positive and productive behaviors. So, uh, you know, you, you, if you're sketchy in your private life, you're probably sketchy um, in your public life. So you got to clean that up because they see and do every, they, they, they see everything that you do. Number three, team members watch, well, there it is. Uh, team members watch everything you say and do or don't do, okay? So if you're doing a behavior that you don't want them to do a behavior, you got a problem there because there's a conflict, right? There's a conflict that you got to sniff that out. Number four, team members need direction and structure every step of the way. Perhaps even more than they tell you. Because the ones who try to resist and tell you, oh, I don't need the help need the help more hello Dennis welcome to the house today's subject is what do your team members really want and um, we've covered one they want a leader that they can be proud of we've covered two they want a leader who exhibits positive and productive behaviors number three 
They want team these team members watch everything you say and do or don't do. Hello, Perry 10K. Good to see you in the house. Um, the rest of the catch uh, broadcast will be able to catch you up in a little bit, baby. Um, number four, team members need direction and structure every step of the way. Perhaps even more when they tell you they don't need it. So you got to pay attention. Another little side bonus that I want to share right before I get into number five and six is that uh, with your team members, um, you cannot manage your team exactly the same. So I was struggling with the fact that I was having these meetings with about seven people that were directly reporting to me. And so I was having a conversation and then uh, they were approaching me individually uh, after the meeting or for the rest of that week only for me to realize that even though I said the same thing to seven people the seven people totally misinterpreted uh, inconsistently what I was saying compared to the other people so it got me to thinking why have group meetings okay why are they not getting the message and one of the reasons they're not getting the message is that the leader can't treat them all the same some I gotta pump up some all I have to do is look at give them a look like are you kidding me okay you had four interviews yesterday and there's no closed business or are, are you kidding me okay well, if I said that exact same thing to another lady that I have uh, in my office, um, she'd break down in tears. Okay, so my, I do manage the men a little different, as you might expect, from the women. Okay, and so that requires leadership to be extremely flexible. There's a lady that's on here right now. Uh, Perry 10k and uh, she has to be really flexible because she's got to deal with all kinds of different creative personalities hello Ania Fitz uh, well, uh, and and Loftus and Loftus I'm sorry about that land uh, and please share those hearts if you could please ma'am um, so here's the thing number five and six and then we're gonna wrap up because this was marvelous mar marvelous moments with Marvin a real leader number five is not one that just has the title now here's the thing to you actually to your customers you are the company okay it's not the sign on the building it's the feeling that they get from you so you're the company so that's where it has to happen that's where it has to happen a real leader not just one that has a title to your customers you are the company you are it so be it be the example and then number six oh man some people sometimes for disagree with me on this team members want to win guys they want to win now here's the deal if they're in a competitive group with a group of other people that are say sales in uh, regional sales people or they got one in Texas and we're in Louisiana whatever okay uh, good teams need to have some genetic predisposition with wanting to be competitive meaning nobody wants to look at reports every week where they're getting their clock cleaned and they're always second to last or last right so find ways for your team to win and I'm going to suggest that if your team is not having enough successful experiences I'm going to suggest for you to cut out focusing on too many projects and get all the resources together on one particular project on one particular promotion and bang that sucker out and then that way they can see them names on their names on the report okay we all need successful experiences nobody says oh I'm so excited to go to work for Marvin because man we're gonna finish second to last hell man if, if somebody thinks like that that's not somebody you want on your team you're gonna be going nowhere fast okay so in a wrap-up because I wanted this to be short let me give the recap let me tell you that you can find me on Google 
All you got to do is throw in Marvin LeBlanc. You'll see all kinds of information. I am a funnel of great stuff. You can go to MarvinLeBlanc.com forward slash blog. There's over 200 blogs on customer service, leadership, management, motivation. So if you're having like a little potty attitude, man, let me go into that blog and let me pull out something that I can take and and go right into my team and inspire my team. So it's all there for you. It's free. I'm trying to serve, okay? It's all there for you. If you have a deeper question and you want to talk to me on a personal basis, you can do that. All you're going to do there is you're just going to email me at Marvin LeBlanc Speaker at gmail.com. Marvin LeBlanc Speaker at gmail.com. I commute two hours a day, and so for those that eventually want to sign up and be coached by me, I have a coaching while commuting program that's worked out great. It's a straight shot, 70 miles on a beautiful interstate, no interruptions. It's a great way for us to communicate. So if you're trying to rebuild a business, if you're trying to hire the right team, if you're trying to get your own self set aside, if you're trying to find out the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, or the threats that your current business has, I'm the guy. Here's the other thing. I'm not just a speaker uh, that that just goes around doing speeches and writing books, okay? I live this life. I am an entrepreneur. Once I hang up off of this periscope, I'm going to be in the grind with you, baby, all the way through tonight. And then again, tonight at 9 o'clock. Tonight at 9 o'clock might be interesting because tonight at 9 o'clock, we're going to talk about sales versus leadership. And we're going to try to distinguish the difference between sales versus leadership. So I'm Marvin LeBlanc. Is there any questions in the house? Was that valuable in any way? Say yes. If you give a few hearts, and that will help me know that, uh, that, that that content was valuable. Very good. Awesome. I appreciate all of you. Goodbye, everybody. Uh, stay in tune. Thanks for the hearts. And please, you can still share. And uh, all the people at the replay, uh, welcome to the broadcast. Enjoy the replay. Really think through these six rules. By the way, if you actually want a copy of these six rules right here, um, and a physical copy, you just drop me an email, uh, and I'll send you some copies uh, of these uh, little laminated cards that you can share uh, with your team uh, and your leadership. So uh, drop me an email with your post office box mail address uh, and we'll send that to you uh, and there's no charge. Okay? So peace, love, and gumbo from South Louisiana. My name is Marvin LeBlanc and I want to work with you and help you develop marvelous performance systems. Goodbye.